um, there is a white spider. So a lot of you may not know this, but uh, the white spider is, it's not officially released, but um, it is in stock. And um, somebody said, do, do we need some Zoom training? Uh, an anonymous viewer, how convenient. Uh, I do not. Uh, Apologies. <laughs> But, um, but so yeah, we have a white spider now. Uh, it's available to ship. Uh, we, will do, we will be doing an official release uh, soon enough. Uh, and I will keep you all updated with that. Um, it is, we're very excited. It's a very, very slick design and came out absolutely beautiful. Um, so you, will, uh, you now have multiple options um, with the colors of the uh, smart spiders. Great. Okay. So let's, uh, let's uh, jump right into it. We're gonna jump right into the features. Uh, there's a ton of different features of the Smart Spider. We have picked out uh, some of the ones that really differentiate us from the competition. Um, as most of you know, one of our big things is daisy chaining. And because we do this uh, very, very well, we're able to daisy chain uh, what is really an, un an unheard amount of units of 15 uh, units. So when we talk about this Smart Spider, we can actually connect 15 units uh, at the same time. Uh, if you, if you, um, if you go ahead and uh, think about our last webinar, which was the, on the SIP Spider, uh, a lot of times that'll end up being the, the master unit with the dial pad, and then you'll put 14 remote units uh, connected to that. But you don't need that unit. You can actually daisy chain with just the Smart Spider. Um, below, you can see a demo we did where we did a, we did a test with all 15 units. Uh, you never put them that close together. Uh, but I think the big game changer here with this is it's a plug and play. So if you want an extra unit, um, you simply connect it with an ethernet cable. Uh, we suggest using a uh, cat six or cat seven shielded uh, cable. Uh, you simply go from one plug to the next and it lights up uh, and all the units work together. Uh, as far as our competition goes, uh, Jonathan, uh, why don't you let them know kind of um, how this does separate us. From yeah. Thanks, Zach. Um, I think, um, for, so first of all, traditionally, what you see in other products out there. It's more focused on um, just extending two single mics um, to the device. And I think it's important to talk briefly about why daisy chaining is such an important feature. Um, traditionally, when anybody's outfitting a conference room, which is slightly bigger than a, uh, a huddle room conference room, where those two mics, in the most part, don't work, end users and AV integrators are told by manufacturers, now you need to upgrade to buying a audio mixer, DSP box with microphones either on the table or on the ceiling and speakers throughout the room. Um, what that does cause at the end of the day for the end user who's looking just to outfit um, a number of rooms, a huge jump in price once he moves from um, a single room um, um, to a slightly larger room. So from a small room to a larger room, he has to jump from a cost of what's traditionally, you know, a few hundred dollars for a few speaker phones um, to now eight, ten thousand dollars easily. So daisy chaining is a huge feature um, that really allows both AV integrators and end users to have a great solution in virtually any sized room um, and um, and even for large rooms without jacking the price up um, for that install. Um, I got a question over here which I would like to touch on. There are a few questions which I'm going to do my best to answer them all, but one of them was how would you daisy chain for a V-shaped large Table. So um, I'll first mention that we have a video up on our YouTube channel that specifically addresses U-shaped rooms or V-shaped rooms, however um, different people call them in different, uh, under different letters. Um, and I, I would like to mention that our products have a, within all the algorithms and all the audio processing that the product does, it has a specific algorithm designed to address that shape because that shape is a very challenging um, room. So. I think I would recommend everybody after the webinar, not right now, um, to go onto our YouTube channel. We can send out uh, links to everybody to go see that video. It's a table that sits about 15, if I remember correctly, or 20 people around it. So traditional U-shaped room in a, let's say, 30 by 30 room with five units spread on the table. And the pickup is fantastic. There's a demo in it and everything. So um, please go and see that after. Um, and yeah, I think that's... Uh, what our daisy chaining is all about. Yeah, and it's, so it's very simple. A U-shaped table, one long table, it doesn't matter. You just um, connect the ethernet, just make sure it's a linear line from the master unit all the way down to all the remote units, and then follow it along. Um, you can stretch ethernet cable really far, so it won't matter if it's a U-shaped table. Um, 
And then lastly, um, I know Jonathan touched on it a little bit, but I did want to just um, make it very clear that um, with our competitors, if we run into Revolabs and Flex a lot, um, you actually cannot add any uh, external mics. Um, with Logitech um, and there's um, like Aver and uh, Polycom, you can oftentimes extend mics, although it'll always be limited, maybe one that'll extend a microphone and a speaker with Aver. Um, and a lot of times you can only extend microphones. So when you talk about that large meeting space, it's great you're extending microphones, but what about the stereo to fill the room with audio? So with us, every time you can extend a spider, you extend four microphones and a speaker. Uh, so you fill the room with microphones and audio. Uh, moving from daisy chaining, um, I really want to talk about uh, single cable power. Uh, so this, this is extremely important. Um, knowing a lot about the AV integration side of the business, um, I know that a huge uh, conversation that will come up when you're in the middle of specking a job is um, cable management. So how am I going to install these? Am I going to have to run cables to a conduit? Am I going to have over the floor raceway through a ceiling? Um, so on and so forth. The conversation goes on. Um, and what the spider gives you um, and with its flexibility is the ability to power um, a single unit with USB only. Uh, so this is um, a big help, uh, less cables, less cable management. Um, this is actually a perfect time to bring in the power hub. Uh, so we have a USB extender um, because of, you know, needs to stretch the USB cable over 16 feet. And I'll actually let Jonathan touch on what the 16 foot number, because it's not something we made up. Yeah, and, and it, it's, thanks Zach. I, I think it's important just to touch on, on that aspect. So. 16 feet, or there's different numbers that people throw out, 16 feet is the um, official number that's provided by the um, USB protocol. So there's an organization who invented this protocol of the communication between um, different uh, USB connectivity. Um, and they um, advise to not have cables over 16 feet um, between the PC um, or the U one USB endpoint to the other for passing power and communication between the two sides. Um, traditionally that for many other products that are out there, many other applications, it's not really an issue if you're talking about keyboards. So a 16 foot cable between a keyboard and a PC, it's usually not an issue or a camera and a PC. They're usually in close proximity to each other. Um, now that PCs have been coming into conference rooms and video conferencing is run on just a PC in a conference room and you're using USB connectivity for it, um, it turned into a problem that how am I going to pass power and communication now to a USB speakerphone, which in most times it's very far away from where your PC is placed. Um, the reason for that is because nowadays PCs come so small that you want to slip them nicely behind a TV or traditionally when you're trying to manage a conference room, you have an AV closet or a little cupboard in the room where that's where you want to put all your AV equipment. So um, now there a new problem arises. Now, how are we going to pass power and communication to a product that is most definitely in 99% of the cases is going to be over 16 feet away from it. Um, so we at Phoenix Audio, we have our unique solution for it, which is basically our power hub. What it allows us to do, it allows us to um, connect into our device um, uh, instead of through USB, through a Cat5 cable, we have a little box. It's this little box that's over here. So you can see it, you know, easily fits my hand, easily can be slipped next to your PC or in your AV um, closet without any issue. It comes with a power supply as well, which you guys can see on the screen. And it passes power and communication into our unit and allows you to still have a single cable running um, to the USB speakerphone on the table. Um, that's important for a lot of reasons. One, like Zach said, cable management. I think aesthetics is an important aspect of it. You know, now conference rooms are something where you want to have um, sleek designs um, and not have it cumbersome and a lot of cables running to it. Mm -hmm. I think most importantly, um, the pain of having to find a power outlet close to the table, either buying a table that has power built into it, which costs thousands of dollars at the very least, or making sure when designing a room that there is a, uh, um, a power outlet close in close proximity to the table, um, could a lot of times not be really convenient. Or if that power is very far, you're going to have to run um, conduits to the table and stuff of that sort. So having our power hub and having the ability to have a single cable running to the table uh, it's a huge advantage and it's done through standard Ethernet cables um, and it's, it's really sleek and, and easy to install. It's just plug and play. Well, all right, Jonathan, I kind of, I know this answer, but uh, seeing as some of these USB extenders on the market, um, 
can cost just as much of just as much as another spider. Yeah, I, I have to imagine this thing's very expensive as well. <laughs> so as you do imagine, it's not. What? Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and I think that's a really good point that Zach uh, is pointing out over here. Um, price. So a lot of USB extenders, I know that Crestron has some really good USB extenders. Um, there's another company, which I can't remember their name right now, that also has some, some good ones. Those usually run in the price range of $500 to $600. Um, the MSRP on our power hub is 199. It comes with the power supply that um, that you can see here on the screen. You also have one over here, which I can grab in a sec. Um, street price is usually 179. Dealer prices are even lower than that. So at a really um, reasonable price, you can add one additional accessory that really solves the powering issue for your USB speaker phone um, in a conference room when working with our MT503. So I think it's important to um, just say that it is proprietary for mm -hmm. our device uh, as well. For the fiber, um, yeah. Yeah, and it, it, it's so convenient. I can even say that I know of clients that just to save themselves the, the headache of having to think about the distance of a USB cable, every installation that they do of a smart spider, they just pair a power hub with it just to save the headache of having to think about distances and, and thinking about where they have to put a power outlet in the room. Mm. And then uh, lastly, I don't think you mentioned it, or I must say I like the, the street price of yeah. the power hub. <laughs> a lot of these things are getting peddled out there. Um, how many uh, units will the power hub power? So the power hub can power up to eight units wow. in a room. So what this basically means is that no matter what use case you have in a room, whether it's a large room, small room, um, whatever it may be, if you have around eight units in the room, which there's almost not a room where that will not cover, um, you can have a single cable powering in that room. That means either single unit, close proximity through just a USB cable, or if you have a large distance or multiple units on the table or in that room, like the U-shaped room that I got asked about earlier, you can have one power hub that will power them all. Very good. All right, uh, now we will move over to uh, the ability to ceiling mount our spider. So an absolute game changer. Um, and we also like to kind of couple this with the power hub and I'll touch on that very quickly, is that uh, when you start putting stuff in the ceiling, uh, it, cable management again becomes a little tricky because I know um, a lot of code will not allow you, to, not allow you to have power um, above the ceiling. I know it's not like that in all cases, but uh, the power hub kind of takes that away from you and gives you the ease of use to power it over by the PC or wherever you know, works for you and then just run the uh, ethernet. Um, so let's give you some uh, use cases of when the ceiling mountable uh, becomes an advantage uh, and you can see in this room uh, over on the left where tables might just be moved around um, so they obviously can't just have uh, devices all over the table um, so we can uh, actually just throw ours on the ceiling uh, it comes with a or it doesn't come with you can purchase a ceiling mount kit uh, for you know it's very very cheap to purchase that and it's very very easy to install uh, and you can spread microphones and speakers uh, throughout the room Mm -hmm. uh, which, again, takes away your need to um, get a full integrated solution, which will cost you uh, an arm and a leg, not literally, but... <laughs> exactly. I think this is, this is extremely um, useful um, for a lot of different applications. We see it a lot happen in either environments where, um, you know, the AV team doesn't want the end user to be touching products that are on the table, or there's that desire of not having anything on the table, but there's no budgets to go to those expensive um, solutions. Um, it's also really useful. We have an image here of uh, the type of training room environment. So think about rooms that the tables move around all the time. So you can't place something permanently on the table. Um, you need to think about, okay, how am I going to get something on the ceiling? I don't want to go to a $10,000, $20,000 solution. Here I can do it just with the Phoenix Audio um, smart spiders ceiling mounted. Um, that's also worth mentioning. That's also part of the reason why we have the unit also in white. So for that use case of ceiling mountable, you want it to look um, the same color as the ceiling. You don't want it sticking out over there. You just put a speaker and a microphone um, with a DSP that's built into the unit that's processing all that echo canceling and noise canceling on the ceiling really easily. Um, I had a question here that came through. There's a couple questions. One, um, in regards to the name of the spider, I'm going to touch on that towards the end. Um, the other one in regards to the power hub, just because it's relevant also to the ceiling mounting, I'll touch on it real quick. Um, it, um, the question is if it works with um, uh, 2.0 and 3.0 products, the answer is yes. 
Um, the second question is if it can be an extender for other things, the answer unfortunately is, or fortunately, depends how you look at it, is yeah. no. Um, it's proprietary to our device. Um, there is a lot of communication going on between the Power Hub and our, our speakerphone, um, which allows it to work in the way that it works. So it's not something that can work with other products. And um, it also connects into our device through an Ethernet connection and doesn't connect through uh, the USB connector at all. So right. it won't be relevant to other products. But thank you for the question. Mm -hmm. And the, the Smart Spider is very low profile. It's about two inches. Uh, so it won't be some clunky device, you know, bulging out of your ceiling. Uh, and given that there is just a ton of more and more USB speaker phones as this uh, market becomes mm -hmm. more popular, um, yeah. how many of those can you just, uh, you know, Put on the ceiling like that so so in total you can put up to 15 units um that's the right. limit of our of our daisy chaining um through one power hub it can power up to eight so the only other aspect that you'll have is just add another power mm -hmm. um to that to that setup and who do we compete with uh, as far as putting spiders on the ceiling <laughs> so um i to what i'm aware of and i think you as well i am don't know of anybody else we even would suggest you to put a usb speaker phone on the ceiling in any way um, let alone provide a complete package of how to do it, not only just suggest it. Wow, I had no idea. That's awesome. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. So, um, just to, we need to run on to the next, to the next uh, feature because we don't want to keep you guys um, beyond the time that we committed to. So, next feature we want to talk about real quick is our bridging. Zach, mm -hmm. I'll let you take it from here. Yeah, so again, I'll, I'll mention our webinar last month, which was on the Civ Spider, uh, where we pointed out dual connectivity and uh, bridging. Um, obviously, that one, well, not obviously if you didn't see it, but it's a SIP device, so it will bridge between USB communication and um, SIP telephony, um, and it'll connect between the two, bridge them into one call. So the Smart Spider um, will also bridge and also has dual connectivity uh, with a smartphone or a smart device, um, given its name, the Smart Spider. Uh, so... It's very simple to use, and I'll, I'll give you a use case. Uh, you know what, actually, let's not just give them a use case, let's yeah. do it. Let's say Jonathan and I are in this meeting right now, and we wanted to call somebody. Somebody didn't show up to the meeting. Maybe they're stuck in yeah. traffic. It happens all the time in Southern California. <laughs> Especially um, when it's raining, like yeah, it is today. like it is right now. So right now, I can just go onto my phone. It's connected through um, the headset jack, a single cable that comes with, um, we'll talk about the packaging of what comes with the Smart Spider, but it comes with it. And all I need to do is just dial. And right now, I'm able to dial somebody into our webinar. So, this is Nicole. Hi, Nicole. How's it going? Fantastic. How are you, Jonathan? I am good. So you are live on our webinar, broadcasted to the world. Um, so just say hello to everybody so they can... Including my... Zach well, hello, Zach. world. <laughs> you guys are looking so dapper out there. <laughs> Thanks, Nicole. <laughs> okay, well... Take uh, care. Thank you. Um, so for the sake of the demo... Um, that's how simple it is to dial somebody and bridge between. So we had we have a USB connectivity for the webinar. That can be just any video meeting um, on any platform that it may be. And having that call bridge done through our device is easy enough just to call so you can ask somebody a quick question in that meeting. Um, it, it saves the, 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 the need of sending an invite or calling them and telling them to join into the meeting or something mm -hmm. like that. You just dial, they're in, and that's it. Yep. So... Um, we have a lot of users who just have this cable just sitting next to the unit waiting. So anybody in a meeting can just come connect it and dial freely from it. Yep. Cool. Perfect. Great. Oh, oops. Um, back. Okay, great. Um, Zach, I'll go yes, ahead. Yes, I'll take this one. This is one of my favorite um, <laughs> aspects of the, uh, really the spider line. Uh, so the, the smart spider has uh, an input-output uh, analog that gives you um, Okay, yeah, just a, just a quick question on the previous feature. Yeah. Um, the answer is e yes in regards to, well, instead of saying yes, I should say the question. Um, <laughs> the question is, when I dialed Nicole with my phone, could she hear all sites involved as well? So yes. Um, in this use case, just because we're on a webinar, you guys weren't able to talk, but it bridges both sides of the conversation. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a video call, anybody on the far end of the video would be able to hear um, Nicole um, and Nicole would hear them as well. So it's a full three-way conversation between, um, I would say, my end, the phone, and the USB connectivity. Um, another question is asked just about Bluetooth connectivity. So we don't provide Bluetooth. Um, Bluetooth, in the most part, is used, I would say, with smartphones for tablets and stuff of that sort. 
um, through our headset jack, uh, through the cable that's provided with the unit, and directly to the headset jack. It's, that's how we connect to it. I would add, um, from all our testing that we've ever done with Bluetooth connectivity, um, Bluetooth usually works on a lower bandwidth, which is around four, maximum depends on, on the Bluetooth, um, up to six kilohertz, um, which really deteriorates the audio quality in comparison to what we're working right now. So for example, USB usually runs on around 16 kilohertz bandwidth, so it's higher quality. So us connecting through the headset jack and through a cabled connection, um, it allows us to be 100% plug and play. So you just plug it in and it just plays rather than having to pair something with it. And it just uh, ensures the uh, bandwidth quality as well for the conversation. So um, in regards to Bluetooth, we don't have Bluetooth, um, but those are the reasons why we don't have it. All right, so now back to the fun features. Uh, how about the ability to connect a microphone to a USB speakerphone? So you can connect a microphone to our spider. Uh, for example, um, let's say you are um, like this man in this image. He wanted to hold a microphone while he did his presentation, um, and he wanted everybody to hear him through the uh, smart spider, often oftentimes called sound reinforcement or voice lift. Um, he wants to be heard locally and as well at the far end. Um, we see this actually a lot in classrooms. Uh, a lot of classrooms use smart spiders, and you're able to connect a microphone uh, receiver to the smart spider, and then you will have your the other end of the microphone um, and we can sound reinforce that for you. So a lot of versatility. Um, generally, you would think an integrated solution when you need a solution like a mm -hmm. podium or some type yeah. of speaker um, like that. Uh, Do you have anything? I, yeah, I, I would just revisit that training room that we talked about earlier with the moving mm -hmm. cables yeah. and, and stuff of that sort. So you have spiders on the ceiling. You can connect to an external microphone where the presenter the audio will be sent to the far end in that video conferencing call. And in addition to that, it'll be heard um, throughout the room mm -hmm. um, as well. So it's it's really very, you know, if there's one word to describe the smart spider, it's versatile. It, it really can cover any, almost any type of scenario that you will encounter um, in a, anything from a huddle room, conference room to mm -hmm. training room that you can use our product to, to cover it. Um, and then lastly, uh, with the same connection, uh, and I will use a use case for this as I just, I just had a customer finish an install uh, where they were interested in our spider. So they went to go integrate our spider into their conference room. Um, but what they ran across is they already had ceiling speakers in the conference room and they really wanted to use them. Um, I didn't ask why, uh, because why not use the ceiling speakers you have? Uh, it's not my job to tell them why, it's my job to uh, you know, meet their needs uh, for their room. Uh, so you can simply plug those speakers into the smart spider. We will mute our speaker because um, we are very friendly. Uh, and we will let you use, use yours. Um, and that just makes it, again, more versatile, so you can make sure people can use the, um, the solutions they already have in their conference room that they've invested in, or maybe they just, they really want uh, ceiling speakers for other applications. So we will um, certainly uh, accommodate that with the Smart Spider. Great. Cool, so um, take it from here, Zach. Um, okay, yeah, so, uh, now that we've uh, dove into um, all of those very, very unique features, um, we will touch um, a bit on the beamforming technology. So this is the way that we pick up audio, um, and we use proprietary algorithms that people um, were working on, uh, honestly, since before I was born. Um, the same group of engineers that, that work with us today. Um, and what I will do is um, I'm going to hand it right back off to Jonathan because he is much better at talking about other algorithms than, uh, than myself. Yeah, I, I, I think in a, in a simple way just to, to describe it, a lot of people don't even, you know, beamforming, what is it? That's always the, the question. So beamforming in, in a simplistic way, what it means, it means that um, through our 360 degree coverage that our product has, um, we're able to steer a beam of pickup towards the voice that we recognize um, in the room. Um, that allows us just to provide higher quality audio um, when we know where the voice source is and focus on it um, in comparison to constant, you know, doing other stuff. Um, a cool aspect of the product that it has as, as well, which you can probably see through the um, Smart Spider throughout the, the, uh, the webinar that we've been doing, there's a blue light that shows the pickup um, of the Smart Spider in a room. So right now, I don't know if you can see it, but on my end it shows an LED light, um, just like you can see in the image over here. Um, so it shows you the technology in action. Mm -hmm. um, so that way, there's two big advantages to it. One, you just know that there's technology there that you can actually see it steering towards uh, voices in the room. It's just a cool aspect of seeing technology. Um, the other side of it is it just lets you know that it just picked up your voice. 
Um, traditionally in conference rooms, and everybody's been there, there's people who just don't know if they're being picked up by the far end. And the second they get a little far away from a conference funnel from a microphone, they start raising their voice, screaming, and it sometimes can get a bit uncomfortable. And also for people <laughs> on the other end, it could sound like they're being screamed at. Uh, so when you get to see that a device picks up your, your audio and it's tracking you throughout the room, and you can see it's constantly picking you up, um, there's no need to scream anymore. So our beamforming technology not only just provides you better audio, hopefully it will also provide you better meetings because people are gonna be talking naturally, not screaming at a conference phone. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, I think since we're getting to be a bit short on time, we're gonna run um, to the next feature. Um, if anybody has any questions, feel free to, um, to let us know. We have a question somebody's asking, when is this available? So the Smart Spider is already available. The, um, the um, version uh, in black has been available for um, about a year or so. And the white one is already being starting to be sold in uh, um, through our direct partners and will be available. We're going to be making an official announcement in the next coming weeks to make it available um, worldwide and through different channels as well. And they, uh, they each have black or white ceiling mounts. Uh, exactly. So when you're ceiling mounting, you'll be able to up. color coordinate it and have it matching and perfect. So yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah I'll talk about this. Uh, I'm not good with algorithms, but I, I'm good with design. Uh, so. Um, this can all be very subjective, right? Um, if you like the like what you are looking at, um, but we will let you know that the spider is a very very sleek design. It's very discreet. Um, it's quite a bit. It tends to be smarter than our competition. Um, we have uh, you know job or almost twice the size. Uh, we have the Revolabs Flex Unit, which um, is um, it's it's about the same size, but it's size, but it's a lot taller. Um, almost I think almost three times as tall. Uh, as our unit, the group, we're a lot smaller than the group, we're, we're half the size of other conference phones. Um, the list goes on and uh, real estate gets very important. So in a room like uh, we're in, which is just kind of a standard host space, I would say mm -hmm. this is a lot bigger than, uh, I visited a ton of co conference rooms and this is actually a lot bigger of a table than I usually see. Um, you don't want a gigantic device um, on your table um, that people are gonna be using to work on. Uh, so we take up a very small footprint. We, do, we have a very sleek um, and discreet design. Um, again, we have the LED lights, point that out twice. It's one of my favorite features. Uh, and um, lastly, very important, often um, it's, it's overlooked if you haven't bought a Smart Spider, but we're, we actually make our product out of a, an, an aluminum alloy, so it's like steel. Um, and if you take a look at, I almost have to say almost all of our competition, um, you are going to get just a, basically a plastic um, kind of, I'll say cheap feeling device. Um, but just in, in the sense of plastic being cheap, I'm not trying to put anybody down. Um, so we have a very, very durable device. Um, and um, yeah, so uh, that's pretty much it for design. Can you think of yeah, anything? Yeah, that? I, I think just the size is something that can't be emphasized enough. You know, at the end of the day, you know, when you're coming into a huddle room, if you just look at this room, this is a table that sits about three people. We're sitting two people on one end. There's usually two more people sitting on the other end at most. Um, you have a keyboard, you have a mouse, you have a PC that's running this meeting. You don't want the speaker phone to be taking over the table. People a lot of times come in here either with notepads, laptops, either both, stuff of that sort. Uh, you need room for that. So um, because traditionally rooms don't have a lot of space, especially small huddle rooms, you want a device that doesn't overtake it. Um, and the size of the Smart Spider really um, nails it from that perspective. Mm -hmm. Great. So we're running really short on time. We hit our, our 30 minute mark. Um, so we're going to run through the rest. We thank everybody for uh, the patience. So I think now that we went through all the features, um, yeah, what well, so we have yeah. in the box. You're ready we'll to buy. The, yes, um, the rest. If you have somewhere you got to be, by all means, um, contact a local integrator, um, purchase a Smart Spider, and then you can just find out what's inside the box when you get it. Um, if you have more time, I'll, I'll tell you. Uh, it will come with a USB cable. Um, it's six feet long. Um, it'll come with a 2.5 uh, to a 3.5 connection. That's for the Smart Spider. Um, there's a 3.5 connection underneath um, the Smart Spider, and that was for the microphones I mentioned, for the external speakers, um, things like that. Um, and then there's also a 2.5, and because it's, um, we did a 2.5 and provided a, a converter just so they don't get confused. Um, so the 2.5 will always be used with smartphones um, because of the four pin connectivity thing to make it work. Um, and secondly, that can also be connected to codecs. So it will, you'll see a lot of our devices um, with uh, purposely built video conferencing um, codex on the market. Um, it also comes with a power supply adapter uh, and uh, a user manual and of course um, a registration. 
uh, for your unit. All of our units have a two-year uh, warranty, um, and there are no support costs for that. So we, uh, we will cover you for up to two years. Great. I think it's just worth mentioning that the power supply that comes with it, it's a five-volt power supply. The reason for that is just if somebody only wants to use the smart phone interface, doesn't need to use the USB, it's an option for them to be able to mm. still be able to power the unit. Yeah. Um, the, the unit on its own work, can work solely off just a USB cable and get power from there. It doesn't need the power supply for that. Right. Um, last slide that we have for you, um, for those who uh, didn't have the hard stop at 1130, um, Pacific Time is just to go over the different connectivity. We talked mm -hmm. about all these ways to connect to the unit, just so you guys can actually see how it looks at the bottom of the unit. So let's run through them real quick. And let's point out too, uh, now this is for all of our spider products, but the all the connections are conveniently located underneath the spider yep. um, to make uh, cable management very easy. So if there's a hole in the table, it'll sit on top of that hole, um, and then you can hide all the wires very, very easily. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Jonathan. Yeah, exactly. Ahead. Yeah. So first of all, we have we talked about that um, power supply that comes with the power hub. If need be, you can also power into the um, into the smart spider directly. That's just used for when you're daisy chaining multiple units. So you have the option of using the power hub, which we highly recommend. Or if it's more convenient for you, you can still use a power supply. We don't limit your options um, from that perspective. Um, after that, just the USB connection. So USB, very simple. It's a, a micro USB connection um, on our end and uh, USB on the other end. External microphones and speakers, so that comes in through the 3.5 millimeter connector. So from there, you can connect either external microphones, external speakers, um, easily done, um, just plug and play from that perspective. Um, we showed you our smart uh, device connector, which connects to the headset jack. So that's just conveniently located as well under the unit. Um, 2.5 millimeter analog audio out. And our daisy chaining. So our daisy chaining is done through um, standard Ethernet connectivity. The reason that you have two of them on our, on our device is because an MT503 sometimes can be in the middle of a chain. You can have multiple units. So you have a link up to the unit that's going towards uh, the primary unit. Uh, the primary basically means the one that's connected to the PC or to your video conferencing application. Um, and then you have the downlink that goes on to continue that chain as well. So you have two of those available because the MT503 is a unit that can be sitting in the middle. The, up, the uplink is also where uh, the Ethernet from the Power Hub would connect. Exactly. Um, we have a question that came in. So first of all, just to say we covered all, uh, all of the, um, all the different, con different connectivity options. So. Um, and I will keep you honest that you do yep. have to answer the spider question. Yes, yeah, so there's well. two questions that are left here that I'm uh, going to answer. I promise that I'll answer. So first question, um, um, there's a question, why do we name the device the spider? So um, I'll start by saying all of our products are named after animals um, in, the, in the most part, except from our duet, which that's a totally different story. Um, but you have, we have our spider line, we have our condor line, we have our octopus. Um, by the way, we have a new product that will be coming out in a few months, which will also be named after an animal. Uh, stay tuned for that. Um, why the spider? Um, a, it's a cool name. Um, B, it's a, uh, it, I think our daisy chaining um, kind of gave us the feel that spider, the spider web and our daisy chaining uh, made sense to us from that perspective. Um, and I don't have much more than that. I could say <laughs> that the smart spider, um, the reason that we added smart to it was because of um, the smart interface that is on the device. So that's how you know the difference between a regular spider, which is usually our conference phone version that has the dual that has both a, um, a dial pad for actual phone calls and USB for video conferencing, and this device that has the smart interface and um, the um, USB connection. Um, so I hope I answered that. That's the best I got about that. Um, we have a question here about um, cameras that we would pair for a Zoom call um, other than an internal. So I'm assuming that internal means something that's built into a PC. Um, there are a lot of good cameras out there. We partner, um, we have uh, a few partners in, in different uh, companies out there, um, such as PTZ Optics, um, Telecam, um, Video uh, HD, VDO360, I shouldn't forget them as well, of course, um, which are great cameras um, that pair well, I think both with our products as kind of having a 
high quality in both ends, both your audio and your camera. Um, and I know that they work well also um, on the video platform um, in addition to that. So I hope that answered the question. Um, if anybody has any more questions, uh, I'd be happy to answer. Yeah, and if that ever comes up to, um, we stick to what we're good at. We're really good at audio, so we stick to um, providing audio for uh, video conferencing. Um, but I have um, a ton of relationships with AV integrators that sell um, a whole host of different cameras, and I'd be more than happy to introduce anybody uh, to them so they could, you know, talk about what would work best in uh, whatever room they're trying to outfit. Great. Um, so I, I would just like to thank everybody who attended um, and asked questions. We really appreciate that um, and want to just uh, wish everybody have a great weekend. Um, and if you have any follow-up questions, feel free either to reach out to Zach or to myself, um, and we'd be more than happy to help. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, thank you very much for jumping on. Uh, we're going to fly out of here, and uh, we will see you next month uh, with a webinar. Uh, we will announce what that's going to be about um, shortly. Great. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.